This video is about the dissolved solids. In the last video we talked about the dissolved gases and now we're going to talk about the dissolved solids in the ocean. Now when you think of uh, uh, water of the oceans you see you see this big vast blue uh, expanse and when you look at it you think water but actually uh, as much as 3.5 percent of that water is dissolved salt that's dissolving it. Now you can see that here that of every kilogram or a, a thousand grams of water 96.5 grams will be water and then 34.4 grams or 3.5 percent of the total or 3.4 percent of the total is is a, is salts and if these other components uh, are things like you see here magnesium uh, iodine things like that salts particles which are dissolved in the water and i have several examples of pictures of salts to to, uh, to uh, put an image of your in your mind of what these things are now what are the most common things you find dissolved in the water well you will find chlorine because of the table salt is so common and you also find a lot of sodium because it's the other component for, for table salt but notice there is more chlorine than sodium so there's a lot of free chlorine just sitting in the water as well but you find a lot of chlorine a lot of sodium you also find a lot of, of sulfur a lot of magnesium and a lot of calcium and a lot of potassium as well in the in in the in the oceans and so these uh these chemicals are going to be present in the water in the higher percentages now there's also some trace elements now trace elements are uh, minerals which are in the oceans at small small amounts but they're still significant if you consider how big the oceans are so there is actually a lot of gold in the ocean water a lot of zinc a lot of phosphorus and these, however, these things will mostly be trapped in things like nodules. We talked about that in a previous chapter. And when they're not trapped into nodules, they're very hard to find. You would have to basically go through gallons and gallons and gallons of water, like a swimming pool of water, to find one gram of, of uh, gold in it. And that's why it's not very affordable to actually mine the oceans for these for these particles unless you were to find a, a lot of nodules full of these uh, trace elements in the bottom of the ocean and somehow get them and people have explored things like that you know sending something some sort of machine to collect nodules from the bottom of the ocean and kind of get the minerals out of it um, but either way it's very expensive to 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 find it but I want you to understand that there's a lot of stuff dissolved in the water and you have to know the order of of the abundance in, in, which is uh, chlorine sodium, uh, sulfur or sulfates, magnesium, calcium, and then potassium, all right? And that's basically the order of the elements, at the, uh, abundant elements. And then you have to know some of the trace elements such as gold, zinc, and phosphorus. Now, where are all these solids coming from? When we talked about last chapter, we talked about sedimentation and where the sediments came from. It's the same thing. Most of these solids are coming from volcanic eruptions. In other words, uh, volcanoes put a lot of salts. Also, erosion or weathering of rocks which creates sedimentation and also from life when life dies and decomposes you, you get these salts and so uh, rivers will put salts into the ocean uh, volcanic eruptions and will put ash and salts into the ocean erosion and weathering uh, will put salt into the ocean and life forms also add source into, well, into the ocean but the major just like sedimentation the major source for salts in the oceans are the erosion and deposition from rivers which brings us to the idea of the water cycle and what it has to do with the oceans. Remember that when water evaporates, uh, for the most part, only water is actually leaving the oceans, which means that, you see that here in the bottom, only the water is actually leaving the oceans and going to the air, which means the, the, the clouds are, for the most part, distilled water. It does have some condensation nuclei and salts which are picked up by wind out of the oceans, but the majority of the clouds are made of water, pure, uh, pure water, and the salinity of clouds is very, very low, less than 0.1%, you know, so it's very, very low, although there needs to be some salt there, uh, there it's very little salt. Now, when there actually rains, what will happen is it will, it will hit the continents and will pick up the salts from the uh, continents and it will erode the rock, chemical erosion will take place too, and the same thing is happening to waves over here. And by the way, this, you see the volcano here, which also adds uh, salts both to the air and to the directly to the water. Now, either way, when that runoff hits the surface of the water, it picks up dirt and salts, and then eventually they will go back into the uh, lakes or, 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 or oceans, carrying with it the salts.
which means that every time one water cycle completes, more salts hits the hits the water, and then less water will be here because the evaporation is taking place. So that because the water leaves without the salts and then come back with a lot of salt, over time the oceans have gotten saltier. All right. And that puts in perspective why the oceans are salty. So you see the same picture here again in the, in, the, in, the, in the screen. But if you think about it, if you were to compare fresh water with salt water, why are rivers uh, fresh water and why are oceans salt, s saltier? Well, rivers actually have as much as 1% salt. So the rivers do have salt in it. But they have much less salt because they're constantly being bombarded by new fresh water from melting glaciers or from falling rain. While the oceans are bombarded by water, which is already carrying a lot of salts. And that and remember that water is constantly leaving the oceans, leaving the salt behind. And so that's why uh, rivers will be fresher than the, 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 the salt water in the oceans will be, both because the oceans are constantly losing water and leaving the salt behind, and because the rivers are constantly being hit by a constant influx of new fresh water. Now, the amount of, uh, of salt actually, um, when the river is actually hitting the water, there's actually, uh, you see that in the bottom here, there's actually a mixture, uh, a process where the salt water mixes with the fresh water. So you would have the land and you have the water table sitting underneath the land, or that's the water that's at, inside the land or even running over the land. Uh, that water will be mostly fresh, like we talked about, less than 1%. But in somewhere in between, the salt water and the fresh water will start to mix up. And we call, we call it brackish water. And there's a lot of plants and animals which are specialists to live in that environment where there's a mixture between uh, fresh water and salt water. And so, and especially in deeper uh, into the land, uh, you're going to have this zone of dispersion, which means where the water, fresh water, actually connects with the salt water. And in places like the river delta of the Amazon River, the river comes with so much fresh water that, in fact, it will be miles into the into the the water, bef the salt water, before the brackish water actually takes over, and then the salt water takes over because of the volume and power of the Amazon River. It's miles into the zone of dispersion actually hits, but that depends on the on the circumstances of the place. But if but that means that the actual salinity of the water depends on the variety of factors. Now, we talked about the sources, volcanic eruptions, erosion, weathering, life forms. Now, that means that the, how much salt is in the water will actually depend. And if you actually look at the salinity of the water, and you will see that the middle of the ocean is a lot more saltier than the, the, the polar areas. And there's a lot of salt in the tropical areas. And look at the... Um, Red Sea or the Mediterranean Sea and how much salt is in those areas. There's actually a lot, a lot of salt in those areas. Now, what's going on here? Now, I put some things here which will uh, hint at why there's a lot of salt in those areas. Um, notice that the uh, when the water evaporates, it leaves the salt behind. So that's one major factor, right? And so you see that happening here. Water is evaporating and leaving the salt behind. Now, notice here too the proximity to the land. And you see how the, the river here this is the actual Amazon Delta that I was talking about before. It would, it's actually hitting the ocean, but notice that it's not until here, miles, 15 miles into the ocean, that you can start seeing a mixture between the brackish, the, the fresh water of the river and the salt water of the ocean. And then that will be, for a while, you're going to have some brackish water until finally, all the way up there, you start seeing some, some the salt, pure salt water. And so if you're close to the rivers where the fresh water is at, you're not going to be as salty uh, at first. But also, since the salts are coming from the, uh, the, the, the rivers, uh, and they're constantly being hitting with the fresh water, the areas which are close to large rivers will not be as salty. Look at that. Here you see the Amazon Delta, and it's not very salty. Look at here. You have the, the Delta of the Asiatic Rivers. And that, for those reasons, those areas are not so salty. Look at here. Not as salty because of the uh, Mississippi River. And so you see that large river deltas will cause uh, the water to be not as salty as you would expect. And so um, proximity to land gives you access to salts, but also you're getting hit by constantly by fresh water. So that will well, reduce the salinity of the area. Also, another major factor is currents. Now, you see the currents here, which we'll talk about in the next chapter. Now, the currents are constantly moving the water around. And so, 
the currents will distribute the salt around the oceans. Now, yes, there is more less salt near the continents, and less, yes, there is more salt in the tropical areas, and we'll talk about why in a second, but the currents will actually be picking up that salt and spreading it around, which means if you're in an area that doesn't have access to currents or you're blocked from major currents, the salt will be basically concentrate in those areas, which is why the Mediterranean Sea is so salty. Right? Because look at that. The Mediterranean Sea is basically blocked. Over here there's an isthmus. The, the, uh, the rock of Gibraltar is basically almost closing the Mediterranean Sea to the, to the Atlantic Sea, which blocks the amount of, of, of the circulation of water from entering and leaving the, the Mediterranean, which actually makes the Mediterranean one of the saltiest areas of the world. Another reason why the Mediterranean is so, so salty is because it's in the, in the area that is receiving the most sunlight. Now look at that here at the bottom, the surface temperature, and you see that the bottom, the middle of the uh, world, the tropics, receive more heat, and so they're hotter. Now what that means is that there's going to be more evaporation. And since you're going to have a lot of evaporation taking place, this evaporation will actually take away, like we talked about before, the water from the oceans, which will increase the salinity of that air water. So water in near the tropic areas is saltier because of greater amount of evaporation. Now, one thing that this actually doesn't show you is that when water freezes, it also loses a little salt. So let's say if you have water here and you have all these little salt particles dissolve in the water. If it, this water were to freeze, that means the top of the water becomes a solid block of ice. All right? This block ice not have, but now you have less water to dissolve this salt over here which means the salinity of the water underneath the ice just went up. Now, that means that the poles should see an increase in salinity as well because of the freezing that's happening at the poles, especially during the winter, which means during the winter, water in the poles is actually saltier than during the summer because there's more freezing taking place. However, that freezing will never beat the amount of evaporation that's happening at the, at the uh, poles sorry, at the tropics. You can't even compare. A lot more evaporation is happening at the tropics than there's freezing happening at the poles. And therefore, the water in the tropics is way more salty than the water in the poles. Now, what that means is that the, the city here, it will be very high. Now, remember, currents will constantly be distributing the salinity around the oceans and distributing their salinity around. And um, so that means that the, even, even the, the poles and the zones will also receive a large amount of water. Now, why is the Atlantic more salty than the, the Pacific is? Now, by the way, to the middle of the Pacific, where the El Nino too, is where the most of the salinity is, is at, because that's the hottest area of the Pacific. And now, I also wanted to point out that the Atlantic is, is more salty. Why, why is that? Because the Atlantic is smaller than the Pacific, it actually has the currents are more concentrated here, and so the salt is also more concentrated. The salt doesn't actually leave because it's constantly being bombarded by uh, more evaporation, and so there's more things here. Now, in the, in the Pacific, there's too much water. It's really large. Look at this, and it continues here. And so it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of heat in order to make this water evaporate. We've talked about this when we talk about dissolve, uh, the oceans as controllers of the, of the temperature of the world. It takes a lot of heat to make water evaporate. The same way the oceans actually control the temperature by having dissolved gases, of, which are greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, methane gas, and water. It controls the greenhouse gas that way. It also controls the temperature of the world by the fact that it doesn't like to heat up. Now, since there's more water here, it's more water to heat up. So there's more water to, cause it, to make it evaporate, which is why there's actually less evaporation happening here than here, and which is why the, the Atlantic uh, actually has more evaporation and therefore more salinity. Now, look at, the, look at the actual Mediterranean Sea. Blocked from most of the currents, same thing with the Red Sea, and in the tropical area, so that means a lot of evaporation. That's why you're going to have an extreme salinity in the Mediterranean Sea in places like the Red Sea. And but the actual saltiest place on earth is actually right here on the Dead Sea, which is uh, in the middle of the land. It's actually the uh, a lake that has a lot of evaporation taking place and not a lot of new fresh water hitting the lake, which actually makes it high. And so these are the factors of sea that dissolve solids in the water. And I hope you understand everything. If not, please ask questions. Next, we'll talk about temperature.